Welcome to The Meetings Podcast, the meeting organizer's podcast source for what's new in the meetings and events industry. Meetings Podcast is a conversation with a variety of voices that looks at events, meetings, and media. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. Hi, this is Mike. Thank you again for tuning in to the Meetings Podcast. I want to thank today's uh, sponsors. Of course, there's IMAX America, um, and there's also, I wanted to um, give you that free offer from audibletrial.com backward slash Meetings Podcast. You can get a free audiobook download from them. It's a great thing to check out. Uh, they have a ton of books in there to choose from. One book that I really enjoyed reading, it was a fun one called The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Sounds funny, but uh, sounds like a funny book. Not a funny book, sounds like a, a scary book, but it's not. It's a very clever book, so check that out. And I wanted to welcome another new sponsor. This one is Gots.co. Uh, GOTS stands for Get On The Stage, and GOTS is the speaker wearable. It's sleek, colorful, alluring, sexy. It's fashion, function, and fun, and it's your new must-have speaker accessory. Uh, basically what it does is it's a, um, we know it's hard to keep your executive speakers happy. It takes work, commitment, and care. Um, and so, you know, it's like almost taking care of your own child sometimes when you're dealing with your executive speakers. Um, so we want to make sure that our speakers are safe, secure, and before addressing their audiences, and if it, and we want to know where they are at all times. So basically, this is a um, it's a, a an event wearable. It's a bracelet, and it has it got it says um, you know it stands for you know get get on the stage, and it basically it has. Um, a two-way audio on it so you can actually talk to your speaker on it. Um, it tracks the speaker through GPS around the uh, the conference so you can actually know where they are at all times before they have to go on stage. Um, so it's pretty cool. So, you know, you can talk to them. You can train them basically to be where you need them to be. Um, and you can listen to them talk too so they can talk back to you. It's got a two-way audio on there. Um, so it was Gots.co is developed by a conference producer, um, and it says here uh, it's because one of her own speakers had wandered off backstage uh, and was fatally struck by a falling road case. <laughs> and, and that's why she built this GPS tracking ability, and it, through geolocation, it only scratches the surface of stuff I think you could probably do with this bracelet. So check it out. It's uh, gots.co. It's G-O-T-S. Dot co, and that again stands for get on the stage. So let's get started with our next um, podcast, and uh, this is with Michelle Bruno. Michelle Bruno is awesome, like all our guests, but um, I hope you enjoy the show, and I will uh, talk to you at the end to fill in any gaps. So talk to you then. Welcome back to the Meetings Podcast. This is Mike McAllen from Grass Shack Events and Media. And today we are lucky enough to have Michelle Bruno on the podcast. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Mike. How are things? How are you? I'm good. Uh, good, good. Everything is fine. Um, you are a writer, blogger, and technology journalist based in Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. Utah. Utah, that's where Salt Lake City is, if you, people didn't know. Um, you develop content and content strategies for event industry technology companies at the Bruno Group Signature Services. Yes. You write about event innovation at the Fork in the Road blog, and yep. you publish the Event Tech Brief, um, which is a weekly newsletter and a website on event technology. You are a former meeting planner and have received both your certified meeting professional CMP and certified ex exhibit exhibit ex exhibit. <laughs> what can I read? Exhibit. Exhibition. Exhibition manager. Sorry, I have a California public school education. <laughs> um, CEM designations, you hold a Master of Professional Communications degree. Um, yes. So let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about you. You and I have known each other for a long time now, which is great. And it's been a pleasure every single second. <laughs> we share a love of Thai food, which we had recently. That was fun. Yes, we do. <laughs> And um, so let's get started. So let's um, first let's. Um, why don't you tell me uh, your favorite quote? So I'm guessing you're expecting it to be some sort of, you know, Dale Carnegie or go 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 business quote or something like that. No, but, not necessarily. Well, actually, that that question is 
easy for me. I've always in my head think about these words and it's really it's Shakespeare's sonnet 73 which I just learned this morning when I actually googled this quote and wondered where it came from. <laughs> but the quote is this thou perceivest which makes thy love more strong to love that well which thou must leave ere long. And I've I've thought and rolled this around in my head for for years and it's really to me just sort of means make the most of of every endeavor uh you know squeeze every little bit out of every experience really love well the people that you're with all the time and just you know sort of you know make the most of every single day and i think that kind of transcends any sort of work or professional quote because really at the end of the day I think it's about you know loving and living and you know when it when it becomes your time to just make sure that you've done every single thing that you possibly could do uh, the best in the best way that you can do it I agree. That's a, that's a great one. A great one. I, I think about that too because I'm always like worried about work. Oh, I don't have enough work. And then, you know, because I have my own business, we got to get more business. And then I have a lot of business. I'm like, God, I hate having all this work. <laughs> it's like work is not the thing you should be thinking about, you know. I mean, it's important, but it's not the number one thing. You're right. No, and I, I think it, after a certain while, when you become established in your business, the work just, it does come naturally. Mm-hmm. Not that you, you know, let down your guard ever, but I just, I've learned not to worry about getting the work. Yeah. It, it's calm. Yeah, it's and, inter- and you have to use past work as your sort of commercial, right? Right. It's your own best marketing. So. Yeah, it's very interesting because of we, with our, you know, AV for Planners, which you know a lot about, we've talked about yeah. that a lot. Um, it's, it's kind of taken a kind of a turn and, and it's more, we've, it's actually doing well, and but then I've kind of stepped away from it more because I'm really like, I mean, I've worked on it with John, but John's really the AV nerdo. I'm more of a production guy. <laughs> I like the I like the creative portion of mm-hmm. events and stuff. So I've kind of like gotten back now into doing my Grashack stuff, which we're still. Yeah. I still do the AV for planner stuff, but that's more kind of on autopilot now because we have some bigger clients and it's it's working. Yeah. Um, but now I started saying, well, I'm doing Grass Shack stuff again and I haven't looked for any work. And mm-hmm. like I was telling you yesterday here, I have a shoulder injury and I've, I haven't been able to really type because it's my right arm. But I had three proposals to do yesterday, which was, and one came in this morning. It's like, you know, a moment I kind of opened the door to it, all this work is coming, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. Anyway, but life is more, when you have an injury to like this, you think about life as, uh, you know, I, you know, think about. And then while well, we've also had some pets die recently, so it's been kind of a kind of realizing you have to kind of appreciate what you have. Yeah, maybe it's a maturity thing. Just well, the older you get, get, I'm not getting the older. More... I don't, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> I said maturity is not as in wine or meats as in life experiences. Yes, yes. Um, I don't know. You just have a different perspective i think on everything i agree so. i agree i agree so how did you get into this whole industry now you said you were a meeting planner where i read you were a meeting planner before this um mm-hmm. before you started writing what got you into meeting planning what was your road I'm, right my mother uh, my mother started a company many years ago to do transportation logistics in other words she shipped uh exhibits around the world to different trade shows. Oh, how interesting. So my first job in the business was to literally go to different countries, get the exhibits in through customs um, on the stand, and then at the end of the show, pack them up and go in the reverse direction, get them out through customs and back into the U.S. Wow. So how, when did this start? Like when was this, when did she start doing this? Um, she started probably... Oh, early 80s. And I joined her in 84. Wow. Uh, So you, so that was fun. You got to travel around all over then, huh? I got to travel and it was fun to a certain extent, but I have to say it was the most difficult job that anyone could have because think about it. We didn't have cell phones. 
Uh, even making telephone calls from country to country was a bit difficult. I mean, those were days where you actually, to make an international call, sometimes in these countries that we went to, we had to go to a place where you go into, you wait in, in line, you go into a phone booth, and an operator connects you. Funny. And that's what it was like. So even, you know, we didn't even have faxes um, till a little, a little bit later. And the countries that we chose to work in were the countries that nobody else wanted. So we worked in Eastern Europe. We worked in China. Um, and that was Eastern Europe just even before a lot of the, you know, before the Berlin Wall fell. Wow. So it was communist in some of those countries. And we worked in Latin America uh, when it was really underdeveloped. It was before NAFTA. So I don't know what my mother was thinking, but she obviously was confident. And I worked with my siblings also on and off over the years. So she was confident to sort of let us go uh, into these countries. And <laughs> Wait, did, really... she, did she have a lot of kids? Was it like she could lose one here and there? <laughs> no, there's only three of us. <laughs> and uh, it was it was just absolutely crazy. So the things that you know we really had to do to get the the exhibits in through customs in in extremely difficult situations and circumstances. I look back at that and I just wonder how I even survived. It was like half the time I was so excited that I actually was able to do it. And the other half, I just wanted to get the heck out of there and go home and hide under a, my pillow. Yeah, it, was, it was extremely difficult work. Where are you from originally? Where did this all take place? Chicago. Oh, wow. Based in Chicago. Wow, wow, wow. That's so. That's such a cool story. Yeah. So after that, uh, my mom sold the company. I actually moved from Chicago to Salt Lake City uh, and had to just kind of start something over again. So I decided to go into the event organization side and started a company to develop conferences and some consumer events and some business trade shows and things like that. And so I went to the organizer side. What a breeze that must have been after dealing with all these other countries. <laughs> um, well, you know, I mean, it was, you know, it was equally complex because I went from the su supplier side to the organizer side and had to really teach myself everything. I mean, the CEM and the CMP and all of that stuff, thank goodness those programs were available. Mm -hmm. But really, that's just sort of theory on paper. Right. Once you, you know, start doing it, is is where the real learning starts and and I thought it was interesting but also complex in a lot of ways and and risky and scary and you know I launched my own shows eventually not just doing the work for other people so that was you know nothing scares you like you know this you know the day before everything opens and it's actually executed wondering if people are going to actually show up, wondering if all of your marketing paid off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's the scariest yet exil most exhilarating thing there is. So what, what, kind of shows, what kind of shows were you producing? We did, we did everything from a, a senior expo for the local um, aging services where it was all, the attendees were senior citizens and the exhibits were every sort of senior type of service. And, and that was, you know, that was challenging. We, we've done quilts, machine quilting, where the exhibitors were people that sell products and services for machine quilting. And the um, attendees were quilters. We've done um, personal finance. Oh, just everything. We owned a pet show. For a number of years, where people actually brought their dogs and cats and birds and snakes, um, yeah, just How just all kinds of stuff. That's yeah, fun. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess you kind of already answered the, the next question. I like to ask is the biggest challenge, but you've already talked about your challenges. Um, well, but you know, really, I think that the biggest challenge now for me, and always has been, is boredom. Um, especially when you have your own business. It's just um, thinking of ways to earn money that are also challenging and stimulating yeah. at the same time. Right. And it's, it's kind of a fine balance. So 
a lot of the, the challenges that I've taken on were things that I really didn't know how to do. But the driving force was this need to be consistently stimulated and avoid boredom so that I could always want to get up every day and go to work yeah. and do things that were challenging. Yeah, I have the same problem. Mm-hmm. I kind of never been able to hold a job. So I, <laughs> that's why I started my own business because it was just like the things that have excited me were when I was a fireman, that was such fun because every day was different. And yeah. then this business seems to be the same way. It's just, you know, you never know what you're getting into. And then some days I long for a, a job that I could just go and, you know, do one thing. You know, I, be a I know you. Guy or be, I know you. I know, but someday, you would be so unhappy. And to get a regular paycheck, like, would be interesting someday. Yeah. I mean, it's fun the way to, now it's because it's almost, you know, it's job by job, but mm-hmm. you'd be neat to get a paycheck again one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead well, of seeing that check come in and then know that most of it is going away. I <laughs> think, I think you're, and, you and I are a bit beyond that. Yeah. That, you know, that desire to have a steady paycheck is really, it's it's just not as exciting as having a client pay you and you know you've put everything, every ounce of energy and creativity into it is far more exciting to me and I know it is to you. Yeah. And and plus you don't have any boundaries yeah. other than what the clients will sign on to. Right. Right, right, but right. they, and but they listen too. and they trust you. You just don't get that from a regular job. Yeah, yeah. And that's an interesting thing too. Have you seen that internet video going around about um, people asking for RFPs for different um, – have you seen that? It's so, no. so funny. Oh, I wish you had seen it because it would be a better conversation. But um, it's basically people going in and asking for RFPs from people. Um, you know, they go into the frame shop and the guy says, okay, well, I'm going to give you this frame shop. I want you to do all the work beforehand. And then um, and then you tell me what it's going to cost. And then next year I'll pay you less for doing the same yeah. thing. <laughs> And it's just very funny because he goes into like uh, a restaurant too and asks the, the the chef, you know, I'm going to try it, but I'm not sure, you know, I want to see what you can do. And the guy just screams at him to get out the door. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that just reminds me of what, what you were just saying. But anyway, okay, so tell me, what was the moment that you knew that you had made the right decision in this career or has that happened yet? Or has that happened yet? No, um, I don't think so. I think that I have this sort of philosophy of allowing the the work to come to me. I mean, my daughter said once that if it, if it's really important, people will come to you, and I it, that's worked for me. I've never had these sort of aha moments where I just really realized that is the one thing that I just want to do for the rest of my life. It's sort of the opposite. I want to create things. And if they resonate with people, people will notice and they'll ask me to do more of those and then I'll become even more proficient and I'll love it even more and my clients and me will be happy co-creating and moving forward. There's no real aha moment in that. It's just sort of this ongoing realization that if I really put everything into it, People will notice, and they'll pay me, and we can move forward together, and it's worked. So, Call me crazy. No, no, that makes perfect sense. And so tell me basically what you do. I mean, what what is the thing that, like the current, what's the current thing you're doing that you're enjoying the most? And, and kind of take me through the process about what how it works. So, you, I mean, you have several things that you do. Well... What I really do is explain things. I, and because I've always been interested in explaining them in a written form factor, what I mostly do is uh, write explanations of how things work. It can be blog posts, it can be white papers, um, I write web content, but it all really comes down to simplifying things that are overly complex and sort of conveying ideas on behalf of people so that their prospects and customers and community constituents, whatever you want to call them, 
will understand a little bit better what these companies stand for. And really, at the at the end of the day, I, I look at it as solving puzzles. So most of the time, clients come to me and they say, I have like all of this sort of content that we've created or that um, other people have created, and it's given to me in sort of this big pile. And the what they ask of me is to take this content or take their ideas, simplify it, make sense of it in a way that will be much more appealing to the people that they want to try to reach. Okay, so what um, what's your... What what event would you like to attend, or what's your um, what's your favorite event? I love book readings, and um, where the author can read passages from a book that I've actually read, and I get to see them reading their own words, and you know, sort of putting the words together with the person, and sort of realize that this this urge to put beautiful words on paper is something that's valued and compelling and I don't feel so alone also wanting to do that even though most of my writing is of a technical nature mm-hmm. I still create I still consider it an art form in a lot of ways and I, I love to see people that that have pursued the same art form as me and it's just, it's very interesting. And plus, there's usually not a lot of people there. So I like being in small, more intimate settings with them. Is there an event that you um, want to go to? Um, no, you know, being having grown up in the event industry, I feel like I've... I've been to many, many different sorts of events and, and conferences, and, and and my husband and I go to a lot of concerts and musical events. So there's nothing that I wake up in the morning and really crave. I love, you know, really, I love plays. I love theatrical events, and I love musical events like opera and and classical music and, and stuff like that, and, and rock concerts. So mm-hmm. those are the sort of things that really interest me more than business-to-business business trade shows or something like that. Right, right. And I, I remember when you talked about you and your daughter went to the World Domination Summit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which was interesting. We did. That was, mm-hmm. I went to it the year before. I found it to be very, yeah. very interesting as a whole. Yeah, I thought what was interesting about it was my my twenty year old daughter's perspective afterwards. She just she felt like it was she really loved it, but that it, it certainly was a lot of you know drama around you know the way people get together and and what they want to do when they get together and ways that they find interesting uh, about getting together. It was we had lots of discussions of me saying, well. What did you think of today? And her saying, well, I thought it was pretty weird. Why did they do this? And why did we, why did we have to dress in our pajamas, go out and break a world record for the most people having breakfast in bed? And it was just like this really strange activity that you old people, you know, engaged in when, you know, like people in her generation, they'll just like kind of sit around and kind of chit chat with three or four friends and, and play games and, and they just do it differently. So that was probably the most exciting thing about World Domination Summit, seeing a different event through her eyes. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably the best part of it, it's just experiencing it, it with her. Oh. I know, If people don't know what the World Domination Summit is, it's um, it's a thing up in Portland where they, look how many people went to it? Like thousands, right? Yeah, there was about over 3,000 last 3, 000, year. 3,000 and they, it's just kind of an inspirational a lot of people who are like coaches like personal <laughs> coaches kind of people is that the name what they call them like yeah and I, and I think i felt like a lot of people that sort of dropped out of the mainstream workforce yeah to pursue their own ideas yeah uh, are, a lot of there's people, a lot of those in the audience a lot which, of authors a lot of inter- i am too internet yeah. internet business type of people and mm-hmm. uh, so it's it's kind of the it's not it, they're not really dominating the world 
but it, and the guy who puts it on, that Chris Gillaboo, is an interesting bird too. Yeah. Um, so I had a good time at it too, but I had the same kind of feeling. I went with my wife, and mm-hmm. and it was just we were kind of. It was fun because the speakers are also good though too. Yeah. I mean they're really That's inspirational, it. and I I I watched a few of them now since he, they've been posting them, uh-huh. um, like that Lewis Howes and. Oh. Uh, amazing you know mm-hmm. with they just interesting takes on everything anyway all right well sorry i don't want to get all got off on that whole thing but uh, it's, it's great that you went to that i think uh, there's a website called chip Connolly has called 500 festivals Have you ever seen oh, that really? website no. yeah you know chip Connolly's from uh, uh he works at airbnb now but he was the joe jo- aviv joe aviv hotel group um yeah. you know do you know who he is no. Uh-uh. So he he started uh, these boutique hotels that he would do two magazines and basically put them together and do these these cool um, hotels, boutique hotels. And he started them in San Francisco. And he's a very interesting guy. I've seen him speak a few times. He wrote this book about Maslow's, um, what is it, Pyramid to whatever. Uh, yeah. You know, and he, he's a very interesting guy. But he... Um, has his website. He likes to go to festivals. You know, he's a big Burning Man guy, and so it's mm-hmm. an interesting. I think it's 500 festivals, but I always thought that for myself, like to do that. You know, like just pick a festival every year and go to you know Zimbabwe uh, and go to the festival. yes. That that would definitely interest me. And the weirder, the better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's you what know? that's what the world domination thing for me was. It's like, what is this? You know, I wanted to go see it. <laughs> All right. So tell me, what is the best advice you've ever received? Um, I guess it's, you know, it's okay to, you know, step to the tune of a different drummer to sort of be more of a leader instead of a follower, I think. And I come from a long line of female entrepreneurs who endeavored to start businesses and, and do their own thing, you know, way back in my grandmother's time. Hmm. And then my mother and I I think, you know, they've always, I I don't ever remember a time when they sat down and said, Michelle, go off and do your own thing and don't be afraid to do it. But they definitely showed me through their own example that sort of living in the mainstream was maybe not the most fulfilling thing in the world to do and not to be afraid to expand your horizons, both personally and professionally, get out in the world, see different things, meet different people. And although there may be some level of sacrifice attributed to thinking differently and doing differently, it's wholeheartedly the best path to to take and, and the best advice that I ever received. Very cool. What is working for you right now is there something that you are taking a new you know using a new app on your phone a vitamin an exercise program you know a work hack something do you have something that you uh, want to share that's been working for you lately well everything is working for me i mean i i've got to say that i've never been in a better spot in my life because you know right now i've been able to sort of you know aggregate all my life's experience together and put them in the same bucket and then squeeze some, you know, squeeze work out of that Mm -hmm. life experience bucket and add a dimension to my work that, that I think people that aren't at this level of, you know, this time in their life, you know, can do, but I'm, I'm really interested. I've joined sort of this online think tank called tentpole And we get online pretty much every week, share ideas, explore different uh, areas of thought, different companies, different theories inside of events. And it's, it's growing in nature. There's no cost to join. There's no, you know, nothing really expected of people except that uh, when you get together, you share your ideas and, and what we're trying to build is really, a, you know, more of a collaborative experience around changing the event industry. So that's pretty interesting. And I, I, I really look forward to those discussions. Is it, how is it done? Is it, is it, is it, is it, there are, is it there are, yeah, some, 
individuals that that got the idea and they put together this online platform and they've organized the platform around five i think six different what they call rings and the rings are organized around different aspects different stakeholders in events so you have sort of the event participant ring and you have the event technology ring and you have the venue ring and they it it revolves around this theory that to actually really do good work um, in the event industry, you have to balance the work across all the stakeholder rings. You can't just do everything really great for venues at the expense of event technology companies or at the sp- expense of organizers to, to really affect change and to really make sure that um, the the ideas that come to the to the fore are having the greatest impact. They have to impact every stakeholder with with equal at least equal um, you know measure in order for the idea to to progress and for everyone to to grab onto the idea and, and for the entire industry to benefit. So th- there's a lot of layers of complexity, but for me. I love layers of complexity because I listen to what everybody says and and what they contribute and then sort of think about how it impacts what I do and how I think and how how I can impact other people and so that's that's kind of what's working for me right now. There apps come and go, but I I I try and live in a you know at a, at a little bit higher level where yeah. I think ideas more than you think about specific apps. And how, how does it? Is it a message board, or are you all talking? Is it? Is it a? How does it work? It is um, right now. The the sort of discussion happens on a platform called Blue Jeans, hmm. no idea. and it's sort of this interactive combination of you know like Google. Hangouts and Blab and all of those, but it's far more organized. And whoever is speaking, their their picture appears at the top. You can, as a participant, choose to be there with your video, or you can, you know, block your video. And then you can also ask questions. So it's kind of like a a hybrid of all those things. But you can also, you know, um, it's like a go to meeting sort of thing too. So it's it's really it works very well. I mean there there's very little like, you know, when people get on they're like, "Oh, my audio doesn't work. My this doesn't work." It seems to work, you know, really well cross platform. So we get underway and and a lot of the evening, you know, discussion is around what Tenpole is about, what the different rings are about, how participants um can contribute and it's really just this exchange of ideas, and I hope you know it, it really expands and goes places because I think it's something we need. That's a great one. That's mm-hmm. great. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, do. We could use your intellect. <laughs> well, thank you. Mm-hmm. So, what's your favorite industry event that you attend? Do you uh, do you really like one or the other? No, I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah about our industry events. I I don't feel that they are, I feel that they have way too many constraints placed upon them by the fact that they're organized by associations Mm -hmm. and associations by their very nature have to sort of appeal to the masses rather than bring original ideas to the fore. So they have to go with the lowest common denominator sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the way that they're structured, and they they really are risk averse. So while I like many of them, and and I do attend on and off over the years, you know, um, I really it's not something that I wake up and say, you know, January first, I am so excited about spending my time and treasure um, going to this industry event or that. They really proved to me to be overall fairly disappointing. Hmm. How do you feel? Well, I, you know, I'm, I've only been going to them for the last couple of years. Um, mm-hmm. And I just like seeing the people I found, you know, when I first went, I was all excited about going to the sessions. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because I thought they were interesting, but then I s- seemed to find they were the same people. Yeah. In every single place you went to. Um, yeah. And then, but I really like the people. So I mm-hmm. kind of have a good time just seeing people. And that's. Yeah. Especially now, since I've been going for a few years, it seems like, Lena, like we were just came back from IMAX. Like, I really enjoy that just seeing everybody. Yeah. And that I really get a kick out of seeing you and other people yeah. that, you know, that I really like that I, I wouldn't get to see normally then. So I, that, that's the one thing I do like about them. But I don't really, I don't like going across the country to go to one of them. Yeah. I mean, it almost, it almost makes you think, well, if the only reason or one of the major reasons why I want to go and see these people and the feeling is mutual because that's why I want to go is just to see people. We should just make our own event have it be exactly in the center of the country. And, you know, yeah. once a year, let's just get together and exchange ideas. Yeah, yeah. No, you it's know? a good idea. I mean, that's Instead kind of what of, we were trying to do with the event camp stuff. We were trying to make it kind of that kind of a thing. Yeah. And I think, you know, for a lot of, even though there was criticism around them, there was also a lot of good and a lot of excitement yeah, I didn't really. The criticism around them for me was I always thought that was so silly. All of that, yeah, it was so stupid. It was just yeah. really dumb, and I couldn't. I uh, it was just it was such a micron of the whole thing. But it, it, I think that comes from people who want who want to be in control of everything. You know, it was it was anyway. Anyway, we can go on about that whole event. Well, the other the other option for us is to pick one event that most of us go to. Mm-hmm. and make lists of everyone we want to see and just go out to our own people and go, we're going to this event. Yeah. Please come so we can see you there. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's probably the best way to go ahead and do it. Yeah. And then and Vegas, Las Vegas seems like a great place for everyone to meet. Yeah, it really is. You and and it's, it's it's inexpensive if you want and um, yep. and easy to get to. Yep. So. Okay, so last question. If you could talk to the high school senior you, what would you tell yourself? I could tell myself that there are so many great things in store for you. That even though there you'll have ups and downs personally and professionally, that if you if you just try to always it sounds so corny, um find a silver lining you'll find that that even the downs you know the downside the the more of the ebbs rather than the flows can be you know reshaped so that you can see them for the educational experiences that they really are Mm -hmm. and you know and be able to move forward with those things but you know the I always say to myself now and what I would say to myself then is never get too high with the highs and never get too low with the lows. <laughs> Just sort of take a look at what's in front of you on your plate, make the best of it you can and move forward. Yep. And you'll always remain intact and, and again, be able to, to extract the best experience you can out of everything. Very cool. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for speaking with me. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they want to just call you up and hire you to do all sorts of stuff or just chat well, with they you? Can go, they can go to brunogroup.com. They can reach me by email, michelle at brunogroup.com. They can, of course, subscribe to eventtechbrief.com. Mm-hmm. And I'm on Twitter, at Michelle Bruno. Perfect. So come on, come on down, people. <laughs> I'm a really good listener. (laughs) You are. You really are. All right. Thank you so much, and until next time. Okay, that was great. Thank you, Michelle, for being on the show. It was a very interesting conversation. Um, It's hard for me to say that, actually. It was interesting for me. I don't know if it was for Michelle, and I hope it was for you. Um, I want to thank, again, uh, IMEX for sponsoring IMAX America, for sponsoring the podcast. I want to uh, also thank GOTS.co, that uh, very cool new wearable bracelet to keep track of your executives on site. Make sure to check them out. And um, also... 
don't forget to pick up your free Audible book that you can get by just going to audibletrial.com backward slash meetings podcast. Um, you can check out the graveyard book. Also have been, I'm about to start to read The Martian. Um, I'm actually not reading it. I am going to listen to it and I've heard that's a good book. And recently I listened to The Boys in the Boat, which was another great book. These are all just fun books. I could start actually putting business books up there if you'd like. But um, I also, if you could go, if you could do me a favor, uh, and go on to iTunes and go in there. It helps us get found if you could put a review in there. Um, tell us what you think about the show, and that would be fantastic. So thank you very much for listening to the show, and uh, have a great day, and I will see you next time. We appreciate and thank you for listening to the Meetings Podcast. Please email with any questions or comments to meetingspodcast at gmail.com. The Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America. America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. The Meetings Podcast theme music is brought to you by the Delgado Brothers, which can be found at delgadobrothers.com.